Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Function and Kinetics. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Alright, so in this video what we're going to do is we are going to talk about how to plot a michaelis menten curve. Alright, here you already see it's technically plotted, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just discuss the theory of how you would do this. All right. Now one thing I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to go ahead and write the michaelis menten equation. And it says that the initial rate of an enzyme is equal to V max, the maximum rate of the enzyme, times the substrate concentration divided by Km plus the substrate concentration. Okay, so we already talked about some of the theory here of each thing in previous videos. Now we're going to talk about how you plot this. Okay, it turns out that when you plot this um, for initial rate versus substrate concentration, so here you see the y-axis is initial rate, the horizontal axis is substrate concentration. When you plot this, it has a hyperbolic shape. The hyperbolic shape basically means that it's going to start off at 0, 0, 0, 0, right there, the origin, and it's going to increase and it's going to sort of sloth off and it's going to hit, it's going to approach some value as the substrate concentration gets higher and higher and higher. And that value that the, the vertical value that this approach this curve approaches as a substrate concentration essentially goes to infinity is the Vmax. And the Vmax, this, this line right here, essentially what it is, is it's an asymptote. Okay, if you don't know what an asymptote is, it's essentially an imaginary line. Usually in this case, well in this case it's going to be a horizontal line. And you can imagine this curve is never going to hit the asymptote that line, but it's going to get closer and closer and closer. So you could sort of imagine as you let substrate concentration get more and more, it's going to get closer and closer and closer and closer. It's never going to hit this line, but it'll basically approach it as you let substrate concentration get more and more and more. Okay, And so essentially that asymptote, this, um, this uh, value right here, that is the maximum rate of the enzyme. Okay. So what you would do is you do a series of experiments where you put some enzyme in there, in the mixture, you put it in with some amount of substrate. Now, I haven't indicated units here, but for this graph, substrate concentration is going to be in micromolar, and the rate, I observe, initial rate, will be micromolar per second. So that's what those numbers represent. So what you do is you, you'll have some way to measure it, but you throw maybe, in this case, seven micromolar of the substrate in, and you measure the rate. And it turned out in this experiment, when I used seven micromolar of substrate, the rate was 2.5 micromolar per second. Okay. When I threw in 14 micromolar, the rate was 4.7 micromolar per second, and so on and so forth. When I did 52 micromolar of substrate, the rate was 8.7 micromolar per second. Okay, so you get the idea. And then I take each of these points for a michaelis menten plot, I just plot them on this graph. So it turns out those points were right here. These were the points that I'm concerned with. And what you can do, if, if you have a program that does it, um, you can actually... Um, usually using Excel or the Apple version numbers, you can plot a curve that has this hyperbolic shape. Now on an exam, one thing they like to do is they like to say, estimate the Vmax of the enzyme. So typically what you do to estimate the Vmax is you look at where you look at where the point where the graph sort of terminates, where the data terminates. So right here, you can sort of see this is where the purple curve, the hyperbolic curve terminates. And usually it's safe to assume that the Vmax is going to be a little bit above that. And if you really wanted to get an accurate measure of the Vmax, you would have to do something called a line weaver burke plot, which we're going to discuss in future videos. But let's suppose you're given an exam, an exam question just like this, where they already have the Vmax indicated right here. So they have the Vmax asymptote right here. And so they say, what is the Vmax of this enzyme? Now what you do is you just look to see where this horizontal line crosses the y-axis, and you see that the Vmax, the Vmax in this case, is going to be 10 micromolar per second. Okay, So that's the Vmax of this enzyme. And if you really wanted to be accurate at this, you should do a line weaver burke plot, or in some cases a haynes wolf plot. Either one will work. But that's the Vmax of this enzyme. Okay, So hopefully that makes sense. You plot rate, initial rate versus substrate concentration. It should give you a curve like this and you can sort of estimate where the Vmax is, okay? The other question they can, the other thing you can sort of do from this is something similar to what we did in, a, in the, uh, the protein ligand binding curve, is you can estimate something called the Km. Now if you remember from protein binding to ligand, 
In that case, we estimated something called a KD. And hopefully what you remember from the KD to estimate that, we looked at where the, uh, on the y-axis it was at 50%, and we basically went over to where it hit the curve and went down, and whatever substrate concentration that was, that was the KD. Well, it turns out the good thing about KM is we're actually gonna do something similar to estimate the KM for this enzyme. All right, so one thing we're gonna talk about and show in other videos is that the KM is a constant for an enzyme, but the, what it actually is, is it is the substrate concentration at one half of the Vmax. So I know that the KM is gonna have something to do with half of the Vmax. Well, what's my Vmax? Well, I determined the Vmax was about 10 micromolar per second. So what is one half of the Vmax? Well, that's gonna be five micromolar per second, right? So what I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to I'm going to look where five micromolar per second is because that's half of the Vmax here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line right over to the curve. And I see it intersects the curve right there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go from that point and go straight down and see where it intersects the x-axis or the horizontal axis. And I see that it intersects it right there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that the Km is gonna be approximately for this enzyme, I'm just gonna estimate it as 20 micromolar. And the Km, remember, also called the Michaelis constant, is the substrate concentration at half the Vmax. So hopefully that makes sense. The Vmax was 10 micromolar per second, half of that is five, so the substrate concentration that corresponds to half of that, you go to five, go over to where it hits the curve, go straight down, and you see that that substrate concentration is about 20 micromolar. So that would be how you estimate the Michaelis constant or Km for the enzyme. Now let's suppose you were given a michaelis menten curve like this, and let's say there's another type of question. What is the substrate concentration? So substrate concentration, so what is it? At, let's say a rate of 7.5 micromolar per second, all right? What's the substrate concentration? And let's say they said do this graphically. I mean, certainly if you knew the Km, you could solve for substrate concentration um, using this equation, but let's just do it graphically. Okay, so if we want to determine that, what we're gonna to need to do is find 7.5 micromolar per second, that's about right here. We're gonna do the same thing, although we're not estimating Km. We see that it crosses right here. And we're gonna go straight down and see that it hits at 40. And actually that ironically is one of the points we chose. So 7.5 um, micromolar per second corresponds to a substrate concentration of 40 micromolar. Let's do one that's not, let's do one that's actually not um, on this plot right here, okay? Suppose I wanted to find it for, let's say this is about six. So let's say I wanted to find what is the substrate concentration at six micromolar per second, okay? So I'm gonna go at this point right here, go over to where it hits the curve, right? Then immediately drop down, and I see it hits right there. So that looks to me, um, that looks to me like approximately 25 micromolar. So 25 micromolar substrate concentration will yield, in this case, a rate of about six micromolar per second, okay? So the fortunate thing about this type of analysis is it's going to be very similar to um, when you were estimating KD and, and other things using the uh, binding curve plot, okay? In fact, the reason it's similar is because the, the form of the curve is exactly the same. For the binding curve for non-cooperative proteins, it was also hyperbolic, just like the simple michaelis menten plot, okay? So just to recap, to, to give a michaelis menten plot, you plot initial rates of an enzyme versus the substrate concentration that elicited that rate. You plot them, it should be this hyperbolic curve. Um, you can pretty much estimate the Vmax where it'll be given. And then to determine the Km or the michaelis constant, you look for half the Vmax and go over to the curve, drop straight down, and that substrate concentration is um, is the Michaelis constant for that enzyme, okay? So hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Um, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Um, we're gonna go over in the next video sort of a proof of the Michaelis constant, and then we're gonna do an example problem that could crop up on some test. Thanks for watching.